Today we've got a Recoil Audio RED 600.1. Let's see what kind of power this thing makes. But before we do that, we have to unbox it. Inside the box, you get some screws. You also get some Allen keys. Those are always handy to have. You'll also find the manual along with the base knob and the cable for the base knob. The base knob is all metal and it has a power and a clip light. One thing that is odd about the base knob, if you turn it all the way to the right, that's labeled min. And if you turn it all the way to the left, that's labeled max, which is the opposite of the way most volume controls or bass knobs or gain controls are usually set up. I'm not sure if that's just a misprint on the bass knob or if it actually works backwards. The amp itself isn't very big. It's not that much bigger than my hand. It's about 10 inches wide this direction and about seven and a half inches deep going this direction. The height appears to be about two and a quarter inches. On one end of the amp, you'll find a single pair of RCA inputs along with a set of RCA output. On this end of the amp, you've also got the gain, the subsonic filter. We should really call that an infrasonic filter, but everyone calls it by the wrong thing. There's a bass boost as well as a low pass filter. Now, one thing about that infrasonic filter, this amp was only $99.99 on Amazon, so this is a $100 amplifier, and if it will do anywhere near its rated power, this is gonna be the new budget king. You don't typically see infrasonic filters on amplifiers at this price point, so that's something I was really glad to see on this amp. You'll also find the connection for the remote base knob as well as a power and a protect light on this side of the amplifier. Turning the amp around to the other side, you've got speaker terminals. You've got a pair of positives and a pair Pair of negatives. Now, a lot of people are confused by this. They look at that and they say, hey, it's a stereo amp. No, this is a mono amplifier. What's going on here is this is not two connections. It's actually just one connection. These things are connected internally. Sometimes I hear people describe that as being bridged internally. That's not correct either. Bridged basically means there's two channels in the amplifier connected to one. This is a simple mono amplifier. These extra terminals are here for one reason, and that's to make it easier for the end user to connect speakers. Comes with a pair of 30 amp fuses, which is the appropriate amount of fusing for an amplifier with this kind of power rating. And you'll also find the ground, remote, and 12 volt positive or the battery connection on this end of the amplifier. One thing that's kind of cool here, if you can see that, the wires go in straight, but the set screws are angled. And that's kind of cool because it's kind of easy to see the set screw, easy to get to the set screw, and then the wire is not angled down into your work surface. One thing I do like about this amplifier is the way it's labeled. Some amplifiers will put the labels for the connections under the connection, so you can't see them while you're bent over in the trunk of a car trying to make the connection. As far as the brand goes, Recoil Audio, I don't know much about it. The first time I ever heard the brand mentioned was on the Robot Underground YouTube channel. From what I gather, the people that run Recoil have been in the audio industry for a long time and have started doing their own thing. And honestly, at 100 bucks, it's too cheap not to buy it and test it and see what kind of power it makes. Now, I can see why you might not want to buy this since you're not familiar with the brand, but that's what I'm here for. I, I bought this amplifier off Amazon just so I could test it. And that way you'll know if this is a, a good buy or not. And if that kind of video is useful for you, you can let me know by hitting the like button. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna hook this thing up to the amp dyno and let's start off with a four ohm mono test and let's see what kind of power this amplifier generates. We get 1% total harmonic distortion at about 314 watts, which falls short of the rated power in the manual. And we clip somewhere around 321 watts. So again, we still fall short of the rated power in the manual. Okay, I've got my resistor bank wired up to two ohms and let's see what it can do. Let's crank up the volume and see where we get 1% total harmonic distortion. And that happens at 510 watts, which is 40 watts short of the 550 watt power rating. We clip at about 517 watts. So again, at a two ohm low, the amplifier isn't hitting its rated power. Now, before we go on, I wanna say something about that. Rated power means absolutely nothing. A lot of amplifier manufacturers are just ordering parts off the shelf from China and slapping their logo on it. And if Recoil would have done that here and just wrote 500 down in the manual instead of 550, we'd all be cheering about it making its rated power. 
the real thing you want to be looking at is one what is the dollars per watt and two is the product itself actually reliable so the question is five years from now will this amplifier still be working i can't answer that question for you but we can find out the dollars per watts so to me if a amplifier makes rated or doesn't make rated that doesn't actually matter what actually matters is the power you get and what you pay for that power love to hear your perspective on that point of view you can tell me about it down in the comments let's go ahead and try the one ohm test out at one percent thd we get 703 watts which is 50 watts more than its rated power what did i say a second ago the power rating isn't that important what actually matters is the actual power the amplifier is going to give you. Why don't we go ahead and wind this thing up to clipping and see what it does. And we make it up to about 752 watts before we pop a fuse. <laughs> I did this twice, one of them off camera because I forgot to turn the camera on and it popped the fuses then as well. 750 watts, this thing's giving us 13.3 cents per watt. And at 700 watts, this thing is giving us 14.2 cents per watt you would be hard pressed to find another amp in this price range that's going to give you this much power this amp is the new budget king now one thing i do different on my channel is i like to hook the amplifiers up to a subwoofer and show you what's going on with a reactive load and the thing to remember about a reactive load test is the reactive load test is not a test of the amplifier it's a test of the entire system altogether the amplifier the enclosure and the subwoofer so don't think about this as a way of measuring the quality of the amplifier this is just a way of measuring how power works in the real world as always my four ohm woofer is a dayton audio max x 10 inch subwoofer i put links to all these subwoofers down in the description let's crank up the power let's see what kind of juice we get well that was kind of sad i only got about 83 watts at uh, one percent thd and an extra watt at clipping but if you noticed on the amm1 the resistance the impedance was some huge number of 14 or 15. this is an example of box rise most of the time if you're just doing a daily driver box rise is not something that you should be concerned about but this is what box rise looks like and i'll make sure to put a video up here to explain how this kind of thing works moving on to subwoofer number two we always get a good amount of power out of subwoofer number two this is my good old reliable kicker comp r12 this test is absolute torture on a subwoofer and every time i do it you can uh, you can smell <laughs> the coils heat up so i'm not sure how much longer this thing is gonna last let's fire it up and see what happens we might get to see it smoke today let's see what kind of power we get into an active two ohm load we get one percent thd at about 325 watts and we clip at about 331 watts so that is pretty respectable and comparable to other amplifiers that i have tested using this method i've got a playlist for that if you want to see my amp dyno playlist it's all right up here now i need a one ohm load and for the one ohm load i'm going to be using my sundown audio 12 inch 500 watt rms subwoofer and it's a dual two ohm so it's wired to one ohm 352 watts at one percent thd and on up to clipping we get 369 watts no wait it had a little more juice it made it up to 376 watts now do i recommend the amplifier well here's the thing i don't make recommendations on this channel i present information i'll let you decide so you've seen the numbers you've seen the price after that it's up to you as to what you want to do with your money but one thing i do recommend is that you click on this playlist right here to see the rest of my amp dyno videos and if you'd like to help me make more amp dyno videos you can click on this link right down here and join these people right here who are my $10 supporters on Patreon. With a special shout out to $25 patron Dylan, 